Hey, it's John and Justin here again for developer day number 10, in which we talk about Neo4j schema and a little bit of Artree implementation. So first here on the screen, you'll see a, a diagram sort of explaining the structure of the data inside of Neo4j. First, you have your root node. Everything um, comes down from the root node. And then you go through our Artree, which is the spatial index, which John will talk a little bit more about how we calculate that. Then um, the leaf nodes of the Artree point to coverage. Coverage is basically um, a geometric shape that covers some portion of the world, um, such as it could be a point, could be a fancy polygon that represents the borders of Wisconsin, say, something, anything really. And then coverages point to collections. Um, and so that's how we're able to answer the query of give me a list of collections within a certain area. From collections, collections also point to a repository, um, so we know where they're, where you can access them, and we can do things like um, filter on collections that are only available online, or only show me collections that are within this. Say you're going on vacation and you might want to do some genealogy, you can do a quick query and say, are there any um, archives or libraries I can visit within this area that I might be interested in? So we can do fancy queries. Uh, like that. And then w on, on these arrows, these are relationships. We have some metadata such as from in two years to so know what time period collections coverage as well as the data that they contain. So we can do other um, queries and filtering on those. Yeah. So um, we talked a little bit about last week about how we were having to re-implement some of the R tree stuff to allow for uh, parallelization. Um, so what we did is we went with a slightly naive R tree algorithm in which we draw a series of boxes and in this case um, we start here and we are trying to index this polygon here. So then in that bounding box itself we, we recurse down and we chop that into pieces and then we look at each piece individually. And say for this red piece here we say does this piece intersect or is it contained by the shape that we're trying to index? The answer is no in that case, so we go ahead and stop. In this case, uh, in this orange case, we say, you know, does it intersect or is it contained by? In this case, it's contained by. So the node in Neo4j represented by this square will point to the collection that, or this coverage, and all of the collections contained within that coverage. Now we have an interesting case like this, the yellow one, where it intersects. So there's a piece of this box here that is contained within this polygon. So in that case, we go, we'll, we'll go ahead and recurse again, draw you know more little boxes in there, and keep on going down and filter out. Now, we only go down to about a kilometer in terms of the smallest box we draw, and we can do that based on the data we have. We know what we have. And that makes it so that our R tree is only a maximum of five deep. So what that allows us to do is because we know of our we know our R tree and we know we're never going to rebalance anything, we can identify each of these boxes and um, Neo4j has a nice thing called get or create. So we just get or create that node and we don't end up overriding and causing corruption. So this uh, fancy new customized R tree, which John has written, <laughs> allows us to quickly index in parallel, yeah. as well as quickly respond to geospatial queries. Um, and then some of the other relationships, which I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. can power the queries, which we know we want to do to be able to tell users, here's what you got to do. So uh, that's it for developer day number 10. This has been Justin and John. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Take care.